What's up guys, we are back for my preview and predictions of this weekend's Fight Night card, UFC Mexico, headlined by Brandon Moreno vs. Brandon Royval 2, and Yair Rodriguez vs. Brian Ortega 2, which we all know is the best fight on the whole card. We all know how their first fight ended, so now we're going to see if that was a fluke or not. But we got a pretty good card here, a lot of interesting prospects with a ton of potential. This main card is very good. Manuel Torres vs. Chris Duncan is a great fight. Raul Rosas Jr. is also on this main card. His hype train sort of derailed after the Christian Rodriguez fight, but people got to remember, he is only 18 or 19 years old. He's the youngest fighter in UFC history. He still has another 10 years till he's in his prime. And then obviously the main and co-main are great fights. The rematch between Yair and Ortega is probably the best fight on the whole card. Yair is just one of the most entertaining fighters on the whole roster, and Brian Ortega also has a very entertaining style where he goes for the finish, doesn't really care if he gets hit. And then we also do have the rematch between Brandon Moreno and and Brandon Royval in the main event. The winner of this fight could get a title shot. If Moreno wins, I think Moreno will probably get the title shot. If Royval wins, he probably needs one more fight. But let's go straight into that co-main event. Yaya Rodriguez takes on Brian Ortega in the rematch. Their first fight was in 2022 where Yaya got the TKO victory over Brian Ortega where he suffered a shoulder injury. A lot of people say it was a fluke and that was actually Brian Ortega's last fight. He's had a year and a half layoff which could definitely play a factor in this fight. We've seen guys who take long layoffs Playoffs have ring rust and I would not be surprised if Ortega is ring rusted going into this fight but Ortega is no stranger to long layoffs he fights once every five years it feels like he fought zero times in 2023 once in 2022 once in 2021 once in 2020 zero times in 2019 and twice in 2018 he took almost a two-year layoff between the Holloway fight and the Chan Sung Jung fight and he actually put on a pretty good performance but let's look at this fight stylistically can Brian Ortega take this fight to the ground because that's where he's gonna have the biggest advantage. He is a world-class BJJ practitioner. He has amazing grappling, great submissions. He's the best pure grappler in this entire division. And Yair, although his jiu-jitsu has gotten better, especially offensively, he actually has pretty good submissions off his back, good triangles, good arm bars. He actually caught Brian Ortega in an arm bar in their first fight before Brian Ortega's shoulder dislocated. But I just don't see Yair competing with Ortega on the ground. But can he get this fight to the ground? Ortega is not a great wrestler. That is one of his big weaknesses. Imagine if he just developed decent takedowns to pair with his elite grappling. It would be very hard to beat this guy. Now he was able to trip out Yair and get him down once in their first fight and Yair doesn't have the best takedown defense. It is getting better. He has very good footwork to avoid the takedowns but his takedown defense still isn't great and he gets controlled on the ground. We saw him get taken down and controlled easily against Alexander Volkanovsky. He got taken down against Josh Emmett and Max Holloway who are not known for their wrestling at all. And most of these takedowns come against the fence. Gaier's takedown defense in the center of the cage actually isn't bad, partly because he has more room to move around and work off his footwork, but against the cage is where his takedown defense really gets exploited, and that's how Brian Ortega was able to take him down in their first fight. And Brian Ortega is more of a pressure fighter. He likes to keep his opponents on the back foot and walk them down. Shout out Enoli Chapa. And I think that pressure is going to be key for him here in this fight because not only will it mitigate the strikes, especially the kicks of Yair, but it will keep Brian Ortega in closer proximity and it will keep Yair's back to the cage making it easier for Ortega to clinch up with him and try and take him down trip him out he's also gonna have to cut off the cage here which is hard because of how good Yair's footwork is and how good he is staying off the fence and circling away and if he does cut Yair off that will give him an opening to shoot make contact possibly clinch up with him look for a trip look for a throw find some way of taking this fight down pull guard if he has to and once he gets Yair down he can look for ground and pound we saw Volkanovski use ground and pound very effectively against Yair. He's just got to watch for the triangles and arm bars of Rodriguez off his back. Now, on the feet is where Yair is going to have the biggest advantage. He's just better pretty much everywhere. Ortega is tough. He does have an amazing chin. That beating he took from Max Holloway was ridiculous. He's a decent offensive boxer. Not the most technical, but he has a lot of power. He'll walk you down, get in the pocket, and just trade with you. But Yair is so much more technical. That jab is going to be huge for him here. Ortega does not have great striking defense. He keeps his hands up sometimes, but his actual guard isn't great. He doesn't really move his head. He does parry punches sometimes, especially in opposite stances. So if Yair does switch into southpaw, Ortega is going to have a much easier time parrying that jab, but in orthodox, that jab is going to be landing all day. That check left hook of Yair is also going to be there. He has a very good lead left hook. And then he obviously has amazing kicks backed behind his taekwondo background. His kicks are better than his punches. He's very dynamic with his kicks. He'll throw spinning back kicks. He'll throw question mark kicks. When they're both in orthodox, Yair is going to be beating 
up that lead leg with leg kicks and then Yair can switch into southpaw and look for the body and head kicks. The teeps to the body are also going to be there. The side kicks are going to be there. He just needs to use the long range attacks, the kicks, the jabs. Just keep Ortega out of the pocket because Yair is very hittable. He does not have great striking defense. He can get caught up close and that's dangerous against Ortega because Ortega hits very hard and Ortega is going to look to get in the pocket on the inside. So Yair needs to just constantly put the jab on him, use the push kicks to the knee, the leg kicks, the long ranged attacks, just keep Ortega away. I think Yair really needs to pressure Ortega in this fight because he will throw his kicks off the back foot, but they're going to be so much more effective if he's the one moving forward and Ortega is the one moving back. He also mitigates his chances of getting caught in the pocket or getting clinched up with and taken down. But in the end... I'm gonna go with Yair Rodriguez. I think he will be able to defend a lot of the takedowns. As I said, Ortega isn't a great wrestler. And then on the feet, he's just so much more technical than Ortega. Ortega is very hittable. I think the leg kicks are gonna be a huge weapon. He's gonna just constantly be jabbing at him. Looking for that right cross off the jab. The straight punches down the center line are always gonna be there on Ortega, who doesn't have great striking defense. Yair is gonna be constantly switching stances, giving Ortega different angles. And Ortega is coming off a year and a half layoff. And in his last fight against Yair. He suffered that shoulder injury. We don't know how he'll return. He's getting older. So I will go with Yair and I will take him by a third round knockout. And then we go to our main event of the evening. Brandon Moreno takes on Brandon Royval in the rematch. Their first fight took place all the way back in 2020 where Brandon Moreno did get the knockout in the first round. And we're going to see if Royval can avenge that. The winner of this fight might get a title shot. If Brandon Moreno wins, I think he does get a title shot after Amir Albazi as his fight with Alejandro Pantoja was very close and it was one of the best fights last year. I think I picked it for my fight of the year. If Brandon Royval wins, he'll probably need one more win then he'll get a title shot. But this is a pretty good fight. Royval is stepping in on short notice for Amir Albazi who was originally supposed to face Brandon Moreno on this card but had to pull out. And he's making a pretty quick turnaround only two months removed from a war with Pantoja. But stylistically, this is a tough fight for Brandon Royval. Moreno is pretty much better everywhere he's a much better striker way more technical he's got better boxing much better kicks he's better defensively on the ground they can be pretty competitive they both have amazing brazilian jiu-jitsu i think the scrambles between these two are going to be very entertaining and the grappling sequences could be pretty competitive brandon royval likes to constantly work constantly move on the bottom look for submissions whether that's rolling for heel hooks looking for guillotines looking for rear nakeds look to take your back he's just constantly working on the ground his grappling pace is exhausting at times brandon Moreno is a little different. He doesn't attack submissions as much as Royval, but he looks to constantly scramble, looks for control, is always looking to transition. I think the grappling sequences between these two are going to be amazing. And I think we're going to see a lot of it because I think both of these guys can take the other to the ground. Royval is a huge flyweight and Moreno is not small, but a pretty average size flyweight. Moreno also doesn't have the best takedown defense. It's decent. I would say it's definitely better than Royval's, but we do see him get taken down a lot. He got taken down a lot against Davison Figueredo, who is also also a huge flyweight and Figueredo was able to get pretty good control on him and we all know Brandon Royval doesn't have great takedown defense and offensively Brandon Moreno has pretty good takedowns so I think both of these guys could take the other down. I think Moreno is going to have an easier time taking Royval down than Royval is going to have taking Moreno down and on the ground they're very competitive. I would probably lean Moreno but they're very different grapplers. I think Pantoja definitely has to take this fight down because on the feet Moreno is just better. He's way more technical, has very good kicks. We saw him finish Kaikar France with a body kick to the liver and Moreno and Royval are in opposite stances so that body kick is always going to be there for Moreno and he can use the body kicks to condition the head kicks and Royval isn't much of a kicker. He's more of a boxer, not the most technical boxer, likes to brawl sometimes and I could see Moreno catching him. That left hook over the shoulder could be there. We know Brandon Moreno has an amazing left hook. He used it very effectively against Davison Figueredo. He could even look for some left hooks to the body. He also has a great jab. He actually has a reach advantage in this fight. He has a two inch reach advantage, even though he's two inches shorter than Royval. Royval is powerful. He hits pretty hard. He can look for some good knees to try and intercept the takedowns of Brandon Moreno. He was able to time a good knee on Mateusz Nikolaou, but in the end, I am definitely going to go with Brandon Moreno. He is the much better striker overall, has very good kicks. Those body kicks are always going to be there. As I said, he can use the body kicks to condition the head kicks, although it's definitely going to be hard to get head kicks on the much taller opponent. He's also the more technical 
boxer. Royval might hit harder punch for punch. Royval does like to brawl, and if they start trading in the pocket, Brandon Moreno might not be able to take a punch from Royval anymore, as his chin has looked a lot worse since the Davidson Figueredo trilogy, or quadrilogy actually. And then on the ground, I think Brandon Moreno is going to have an easier time taking Royval down. I think Royval will be able to take Moreno down and look for top control, look for some sort of position, just roll for submissions. He's always going to be working off his back, but I think Moreno is the more technical grappler at least, and is the better wrestler I would say as well. But as I said, on the ground they are very competitive. I think Royval is going to want to take this fight down because it's more even there than on the feet, I think. I think Royval needs a finish. I think he needs to find a way to knock out Brandon Moreno, who has a very good chin, although it is definitely weakened since the Davis and Figueredo fights. Or he's going to have to look for a submission, which is going to be hard because better grapplers like Alejandro Pantoja have got Moreno down and haven't been able to submit him. I don't think Moreno's ever lost by submission. Moreno in his professional MMA career has never even been finished. He's never been knocked out. He's never been submitted. So I'm definitely going to go with Brandon Moreno and I will take him by a decision. So that is it. Those are my final predictions for this weekend's fight night card. UFC Mexico. It's a very good card. The co-main and main are great. The main card overall is very good as well. There's some good fights on the prelims, some very good prospects. And I'm going to break down all the fights after they happen. So subscribe so you don't miss those. Like the video if you didn't enjoy. Leave your predictions for this card in the comments down below and I'll see you guys in the next one.